Hey there world, I'm the Courageous Goldfish, and this is Exhibit A of why I should have my credit card privileges revoked. I've been saving up prize figures to make uh, end of the season like fall slash winter figure haul uh, because I mostly do single videos for my scale figures and then compile all of my prize figures into one video like seasonally uh, but unfortunately my January pre-orders got delayed which is not surprising because it's Tokyo Otaka mode what are you gonna do? So today I actually have a merch haul. So I do have some figures. I'm gonna go ahead and get my fall figures out of the way. You've probably already seen a few of them in my other videos, but I thought that I would give some in-depth thoughts and some b-roll of them. And then I've also got some other merch that I've picked up over the course of these few months. And we have a mystery box from Hobby Genki to open today. I have a few things to talk about, so let's just get right into it. And the first thing that I have to show you is these earrings. So I love Nintendo. I grew up on Nintendo games. And so when I saw these adorable Kirby earrings, I could not resist, especially because I like the style of the Kirby earrings as well. When it comes to like nerd fashion, I'm very like, I, I'm fairly conservative because I like it to be like fashion forward as well instead of just like somewhat questionable and so I really really liked these. I thought they would go really well with a lot of my outfits because I have a lot of pink and a lot of yellow in my wardrobe so I was super duper excited to pick these up. They were $13 from Hot Topic. Also from Hot Topic and on the same day they were having a sale because they're always having sales that was buy one get one 30% off and so I also picked up this really adorable liquid Kirby star keychain this is just adorable. I cannot wait to put it on my school backpack. It's just got some really cute like star glitter on the inside and a little like floating Kirby dude. Absolutely adorable. And the plastic is super sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break open on me. I really, really like the gold clasp. It just kind of gives it a little bit more sophistication if that's a word you can use to describe this object. But I am in love with this. It was also $13 from Hot Topic. All right, now to get into my figures. I have three figures to talk with you about today, and two of them came to me from Anime Bargain Bin Victoria. I got an Instagram ad for Anime Bargain Bin, and so I decided to try out the service and see what I thought about it. They happened to be doing a 30% off in stock items at the time that I ordered and so I got 30% off of the figure that I bought that was in stock and then I paid for a pre-order that just kind of got lumped in and sent at the same time. The figure that was in stock that I got the 30% discount on is the 2020? 2021? It's one of the 2020 something Sakura Mikus by Taito and she is just adorable. I, in my opinion, this is the best Sakura Miku pose and so I was super duper duper excited to add this one to my collection. I absolutely love the pink color scheme. Everybody knows Sakura Miku is one of the best Mikus and so I really wanted to have one in my collection. Now this figure is adorable but I have to say quality wise it is definitely my worst Taito figure. You can really see the messy sculpt in her hair. Her left pigtail pops out at even the slightest hint of wind. Her paint job is not the greatest ever. You can kind of see in and around her boots that the paint job is not the greatest thing ever or like her sleeves are kind of messy. You can just overall really tell that this is a lower quality figure than the other Taito Mikus that I have. From far away, she looks great. So to have her displayed, I'm really excited about. But yeah, overall, she's not the greatest quality Taito figure that I own. Still can't super duper complain though, because the Taito figures are cheap and for what you get for the price that you pay is pretty fair. But I will say I was expecting more because of my previous experience with Taito prize figures. Not to say that they're all bad, this one is just kind of eh. And my pre-order from Anime Bargain Bin was the Sailor Moon Eternal Glitters and Glamours figure. So obviously, you know, I love Sailor Moon. I have a Sailor Moon tattoo. I'm always talking about Sailor Moon. And I am quite vocal about the fact that we usually get very stiffed for good Sailor Moon figures. And so I thought, Sailor Moon prize figure, I wanna see what this is about. 
And to be honest, for what it is, I'm not mad about it. I'll start with the things that I do like. I think that her size is really, really awesome. She's big even for a prize figure, and so I think it's definitely worth it size-wise. I think the actual sculpt of the figure is very, very nice, and her facial expression is really cute. The pose is something that I really like as well. However, the quality could be better. And this is what I say all the time with the Sailor Moon figures, is that they just, they really don't care about the quality very much. So you can see she's got a lot of scuffs, she's got a lot of paint transfers, she's got a lot of marks where the paint shouldn't be. Um, I'm gonna see if I can try and maybe like magic eraser it away a little bit very carefully uh, So we'll see if that works out, but yeah, there's just there's just too many paint flaws for me to be a hundred percent on board with this figure the 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 joints for the wings and the joints for the hair pieces and the arms are just kind of loose, so if you drop this figure or you brush up against it, you're probably gonna knock something off to be fair, she is probably going to eventually end up in my detolf and that won't be a problem. So overall, the only really big gripe I have about this figure is the paint transfers, but we'll see if I can fix that with the magic eraser. I actually didn't know when I ordered this figure if I would be getting the A version or the B version, and I didn't really care too much, so I was like, whatever shows up, I'll be okay. So this is actually the A version, which is the animation color version which is like the brighter colors, and version B would be the more pastel color palette and the lighter colors. Again, I didn't really care. I don't think there's too much of a difference between the two. However, I gotta say, this animation color, the coloring is really nice on this figure, to be fair. I was actually able to take a magic eraser to this and got most of the scuffs and paint transfers off. As you can see, the top layer of her skirt's looking pretty good here. Uh, the only place that I really wasn't able to fix as much was the top of her glove, uh, but the wings came out super, super nice and the little scuff on her hair barrette as well. So I definitely would recommend if yours came in with some paint transfers or some paint flaws or anything like that, very lightly try just a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. It might save your life. Be very, very careful not to lift the paint underneath, obviously. Just go slow and like, careful. Uh, but this did seem to work out for me pretty well. As some of you may know, I did unpack one of my Grail figures in December, and that was the Aquamarine 1-7 scale Xenon, and I actually got one of my figure pre-orders lumped in with that package, which I did not show at the time. You might have seen her in the background of some of my videos already, but I have the Pop-Up Parade Lucy Hartphilia Taurus version. Now this is just a great figure. I am a real big fan of the Lucy's, and I'm really, really excited, hoping that they do more of the star dresses. I actually passed up on the Aquarius version. There was just something about it that I was kind of like, I don't know if I really need to have that one. But then this prototype came out, and I was like, oh no, I need to have that. She, her facial expression is awesome. I love the space buns. Her hair is just so cute. The pose and everything, I was just like, she looks badass and that's amazing. I already knew that I was going to be pre-ordering the new Urza pop-up parade, the Benny Zakura blade version, and so I thought to myself it might be kind of nice if I have balance. If I have two Lucy's and two Urza's they can sit together and it'll kind of like make my collection flow, right? So that was kind of my thought, but I do actually like her just because it's her, right? Like I didn't buy her specifically to go with the other Urza, she actually is a really good figure. I think a lot of people have really been harsh on the pop-up parades lately, saying they've been going down in quality and the paint job isn't as nice. That hasn't been my experience. My experience with the pop-up parades is great. I am an avid defender. I think that they are a great line that Good Smile is doing and I can't wait to see what they do with it. Wan Hobby is coming up and so I am assuming that we're going to get some pop-up parade announcements. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So. We'll see what becomes of that, but yeah, for now. We got a we got a little cowgirl up in here. Adorable. I recorded this before the bullshittery that was One Fest 35. And let me just say this comment did not age well. Uh, I'm gonna do a whole entire video next week talking about my thoughts and my feelings on the pop-up parade L and XL. 
I'm assuming you can tell by the tone of my voice, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little trepidatious. But uh, tune in next week for my thoughts on that, I guess. One thing that you may or may not know about me is that I have loved plushies since I was a very wee child. I've always really liked like fluffy and soft and cute things and so it just kind of makes sense. And to be fair, I haven't actually bought myself a stuffed animal in a really long time and so I actually have two here today that I would like to show you. The first of which is this adorable cinnamon roll machine. How adorable is this man? I fought myself very hard on buying this for months because it's kind of expensive. It's $40. To be fair, it is a pretty big size for $40, but I was like, I'm kind of trying to get out of plushies. Like I'm just trying to keep the ones that I really, really love so they don't take up as much space, you know, blah, blah, blah. Eventually broke down and ordered him off of Indigo. Her. Pusheen is a her. I keep misgendering you, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I really don't have too much to say about this other than she is phenomenal. An absolute win. She is like squishy and beautiful and is made of like such a soft material. I had seen this in person already and so I knew that I was gonna love it. She is just made of such an absolutely phenomenal material. So squishy and like soft and perfect and I love her so much. She's adorable. I'm happy. I have one other Pusheen and so I was like, I don't know if I really need two Pusheens, but eventually I just broke down. I mean, look at this. A cinnamon bun? A cat cinnamon bun? I needed it. And now we are moving on to the mystery box, uh, which I think I already spoiled what it is. It is another plushie. Um, but I have a little bit of a story to tell about this because it is a Pokemon plushie. I was raised on Generation 4. I was raised on Diamond, I was raised on Pearl, I was raised on Platinum, and so I have just such a fond nostalgia for those games, which is why I'm absolutely loving the Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, like the whole thing. Even though it's kind of a little bit controversial, I'm having a really fun time playing it, reliving all of my childhood memories, and my favorite Pokemon is Shinx. And so when they announced the remakes, I was like, oh, they better make some killer Shinx merch. And I saw that the Pokemon Center was doing a collaboration with Fila uh, to make like a whole entire line of like Shinx and its evolutions for merch. And I really wanted a lot of different parts of this. I wanted the Fila shirt with the Shinx on it. I wanted the mug, the mug was adorable. Um, but by the time I found out about it, it was already pretty much sold out. But I was able to snag one little thing off of this collection. Uh, it's called My Rentarar's Story. Uh, Rentarar, I think is um, the Japanese name for Luxray. So I did manage to snag something out of this collection and I'm so excited to open him. So let's go ahead. Um, I ordered him off of Hobby Genki, uh, which is my first time using Hobby Genki. So it came pretty fast because I had to pay for DHL for this, which was stupid. But you know, that's just the life of a person importing things from Japan right now. Free him, we will free him. from his prison. Oh my god. Look at this man. <laughs> he's perfect. And he's got like the big tag even. Oh, I love it. Okay. So this is the My Rentarar Story Shinx plush. He is just adorable. I love him. He, uh, the thing that really sold me on this was the fabric on it because I knew he was gonna be really soft like this. Um, I actually have up over here, my Piplup, which is my, like my, probably my second favorite Pokemon. And this is also a really fluffy plush and also a really decent size. And so I thought they would kind of go together. They're similar sizes and they're my favorite Pokemon and they're made of really nice material. So I was like, 
I need him. He was expensive, I will be fair. Um, we don't want to really talk about it, but it was like 85 Canadian dollars, including shipping. But honestly, worth stonks. I trade my soul and my lifeblood and receive a fluffy boy in return. So it's okay. He is perfect. Like I could not have wished for a better Shinx plush, honestly. This is just perfect. He's got beans in his butt too. So he's gonna like actually sit upright because his head is pretty big. So I was worried he was gonna kind of like flop over, but he's got beans in his butt. So he's gonna sit perfectly. I love. If I must make one criticism, it is his nose. It is just like, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, maybe in the B-roll, but his nose is just like a little felt oval that they kind of just glued on there. There's no like stitching around it. It's just kind of like stuck there. So that would be my one and only criticism. Otherwise he is gorgeous. I'm so excited. Oh my God. He's perfect. Look. Ah! I can't believe it. You are just, you are, you are everything I have hoped for. You are all of my dreams, all of my hopes and dreams. So yes, these are, these are my new plush friends. But yeah, that is all I have to talk to you about today. I hope that this was somewhat interesting. I know it's not usually what I do on this channel. Mostly I just focus on figures, but I kind of wanted to expand into other nerd-centric hobbies and collecting. So I hope that this was also interesting to you. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will have my January pre-orders by the end of this month and I can do a video on those when they come, but no promises on that because it's Tokyo Otaku Mode we're talking about. Do you ever get anything on time from Tokyo Otaku Mode? No. Not that I've heard anyway. These are actually my first orders from Tokyo Otaku Mode, so I can't really like say too much, but the rumor mill has kind of uh, given me this expectation that you should never expect anything to be on time if you order it from there. Anyways, as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you on the flip side.